hi and welcome to my channel in this video I'm gonna talk about how to migrate your Postgres database to a MongoDB Atlas cluster using Confluent Kafka I will show you step-by-step -step process of how to create a Kafka cluster and create sync and source connectors to migrate your Postgres DB data to a MongoDB Atlas cluster migrating huge data set had always been a trouble for database engineers let us see how we can use Kafka to migrate from Postgres SQL to MongoDB Atlas. So let us first try to understand what is Kafka. Kafka is nothing but an event streaming platform which handles transportation of messages across your multiple system. Imagine Kafka as a post office. Just like you deliver letters to your post office, Kafka receives and sends messages on the internet from multiple systems. So there would be certain producers which will produce messages into Kafka and there would be certain consumers which would receive the messages or read the messages from Kafka. To read and write these messages, Kafka uses something called as connectors. So there would be source connectors which would pull in the data from the producers and write into the Kafka and there would be sync connectors which would receive the messages from Kafka and send them to consumers. And the data which is pulled in from the producers are written in Kafka into something called as topics. In our use case, Postgres SQL is the producer which will produce the data into the Kafka topics and MongoDB Atlas is the consumer which will receive the data. We are going to use Confluent Kafka which is the cloud version of Kafka for our use case. So let's get started. To start with the migration, you will need an account for your Confluent Cloud. To make an account, search for Confluent Cloud in Google you can see the website confluent.io so that is where you can create your own confluent kafka cluster which you will be using to transmit your data from postgres db to mongodb you can click on try for free and you can sign it up here either by providing the details or you can also sign it with github or google so this is the landing page once you have signed up for confluent cloud Remember that it's a free account. If you go to billing, you can see the details that there are some free credits around $400. So everything which you use in Confluent is chargeable either by hour or by usage. So you can utilize this $400. So you can actually use this $400 to transmit your data if your data size is limited within that usage. So now let's get started and create a new cluster click on that you can get an option to create a Kafka cluster so if you click on create cluster it will ask for what type of cluster you would want to create so for now I'm going for a basic configuration it will ask which cloud provider would you prefer to host your Confluent Kafka cluster I'm going with AWS remember that the region which you choose should be the same region where your MongoDB Atlas resides because for the MongoDB Atlas sync connector to work both should be on the same region so I'm going for EU Central 1 because my MongoDB Atlas is in EU Central 1 and I click on continue there is an option to provide your payment details but it's optional so you can just go to review and you can name your cluster if you want and just click on launch so this will spin up a Kafka cluster for you on Confluent Cloud on AWS so you can see the cluster is created already you can see there are certain options like I can see topics if I want so currently there are no topics so there's nothing visible here but I can create a new topic if I want and there is an option for connectors so for this use case, we are going to use this section. So when we click on connectors, it lists all the connector plugins available on Confluent Kafka. So we are going to first start with the source connector, which is the Postgres source connector to pull in the data from our Postgres DB into the Confluent cloud in a particular topic. So if I search for source, I can see all the source connector plugins available on Confluent cloud. So there's also one particularly for Postgres so we'll be using this one Postgres source 
it's asking for a particular topic name we can provide a specific topic name or if we leave it blank the topic name would be same as the name of the table which you are trying to replicate click on continue so i'm going to give it global access so there are certain api credentials which would be generated you can copy these and keep them safe but you'll not be using it in this particular use case click on continue and here you have to provide the details of the postgres db which you're trying to connect and get the data from so i have provided all the credentials i am using the big animal version of postgres db that is the cloud version so you can actually transmit data from cloud or also from on-premise this particular example i am using the cloud version of postgres and now we have to provide the output record type which we want i am choosing json because that's a common type but yeah there are also other options provided by confluent kafka so this is the table which you want to replicate or the data which you want to pull in into your topic so i have a table known as users in my particular database so i'll be copying that so if you click on advanced features there are some other things which you can provide while creating the topic and pulling in the data from your postgres db one of that is to select the mode it can be bulk incremental or timestamp or both i'm using incrementing which means that data would be pulled in on the basis of the incrementing value of a particular field and that field can be provided here so in my case i have a field id which is an auto increment number in my table users so i'll provide that you can also use timestamp and provide a timestamp field so if it's a table containing values based on timestamp then the data pulled into the kafka will be based on the timestamp value and as the new timestamp records are added to your particular table those data will be pulled in in real time into your kafka topics so now just click on continue so here you can see the rate for your particular connector it's these mean dollars per hour you can also increase number of tasks but we'll just need one task so i'll click on continue so this will be charged from your particular 400 dollar credit which you already have in your free account just click on continue and you can see the postgres source connectors is starting to get provisioned it will take a few seconds so you see now your postgres source connector is running now if you click on postgres source connector you can see the details that if it's running and how many messages processed so this, you see already six messages have been processed in settings you can see all the parameters which you had just provided and now if you click on topics you can see that there is a new topic created known as users that's the same name as the table which i tried to pull in and when i click on users and go to messages i can jump to a particular time to check all the messages starting from that time so i'll select 12:13 and in topics there are particular partitions but in our case we are only having one partition so we're only going to check on partition zero and here you can see all the messages which are pulled in so you can see here this was the data which i was trying to pull in these six records were there in my table and all those six records have already been pulled in into the kafka topic now let us create the sync connector which will be pulling in the data from this particular topic and writing to our mongodb atlas cluster or the atlas database so go to connectors and search for sync and you can see that there is a mongodb atlas sync connector and it will ask for the topic from which you want to fetch the data into the sync connector so i'm going to select the users topic it can again 
give different types of access and also generate API keys. Click on continue. You have to remember that in your MongoDB Atlas, the firewall restriction should not be there for the confluent cluster IP. So you have to provide the exception for the confluent cluster IP to access your MongoDB Atlas. So here you can provide the credentials of your MongoDB Atlas. So I have provided the details of my MongoDB Atlas and also I have provided the database and the collection to which I want to write the data which I have just pulled in from Postgres. So click on continue. It will again ask for what type of record you want to maintain. So since my input data into the topics were JSON, so I'll keep the same. There are also advanced configurations which you can provide like how many intervals you want to pull in also some other details but for now we'll all keep it to basic and click on continue so here again you can see the cost and click on continue you can see all the details which you just provided and for one final time when you click on continue it will start provisioning the sync connector so you can see it is getting provisioned and now my sync connector is also running so if i go to my connector I can see how many messages processed and also in the settings I can see all the details which I just provided. So now let's try to see that if our sync connector is actually working. Let's log into our MongoDB Atlas. So I have connected it through my Visual Studio code. If you want to know how to connect and work with your MongoDB Atlas or your MongoDB cluster using VS Code, my video in the link above will give more details. So you can see in my Postgres DB there's a new collection user sync and there are six documents inside that. Let's go and view document and you can see that all the documents which were there in Postgres are now in my MongoDB Atlas database. It's right now a real-time sync which is happening so until you stop your connectors any data which is added to your Postgres will automatically be reflected here in your MongoDB Atlas database. So let's try that. So I'll add a new user here into my Postgres DB. The user has been added. Now let's just see that if that user is getting reflected in our MongoDB Atlas, I'll just refresh my collection. And you can see the now document count has increased. And if I go for view documents, you can see that the new entry which I just added is now in my MongoDB Atlas database. So like this, you can sync your entire Postgres DB into your MongoDB Atlas. And once you stop the connectors, there will be no data flow from your Postgres into your MongoDB Atlas. I hope that this video was informative for you. Please like, share and subscribe if you like my videos. Thank you for watching.